Which brings us to a very interesting place because the watershed that you took us through with the crest and, and your two brothers, Marie and Donald and all the rest of it, was the watershed from well-meaning amateur or community theater, which had existed in Canada, Forever. going over <laughs> the hump into saying, we're absolutely going to be professional. Yeah. What was that fight like to do that? Well, I think it was very difficult. Um, I was not here for a lot of that. I'd been living in England, so, you know, when they got things organized, they uh, said, come on back and join you us. You came back in 1950? Um, no, it would have been, the crest opened in 54. So I came back for the crest in 54. I had been back and worked at the Straw Hat Players, I think. Um, right, and Stratford, in Stratford in 50, no, Stratford 54, right? Um, Taming of the Shrew? Yes. That was after the first year at the crest, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And was it the crest that brought you back from England? Yes. Your brothers phoned you up? Yes, yeah. And said, Barbara, we want you here. You better come. <laughs> <laughs> What was it like to leave England then? Well, um, it was okay for me. I wasn't, um, I wasn't working at that point. I'd been on an Arts Council tour a few months previously. Um, my then husband, Max Helpman, he had been working at the old Vic. And, uh, but the season was finished and he hadn't been really absolutely delighted with the parts he'd been given. So uh, he was quite willing to come back. But it's the age-old uh, Canadian dilemma. Do you try to have a, an artistic career in an established culture where the ladder is a lot higher and you can go a lot further? Or do you come back to a country that's just trying to start to make its culture and not have the career ladder there? Yeah. But how did you feel about that? Well, um, at that point, it, it wasn't a problem uh, for me, really, because any work that I had done in England was, well, not spectacular, to say the least. But it was the, as you say, the 50s. I went to drama school. I went to the Central School in London, and um, I was always being uh, sidelined because of my appearance. Uh, you know, it was England, and there was a sort of English beauty. Claire Bloom had graduated just before I did, and she was kind of the ideal English rose, you know. But uh, the, um, Gwyneth Thurburn, the, the uh, head of the school, was always saying to me, oh, Barbara, you know, uh, no, they didn't call you by their first name, they called you by your last name, Claire. Um, you know, you do, because um, I'd, I'd said, you know, I'd really like some different kinds of parts because they were always uh, casting me in, in um, um, very, um, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, Character parts or? No. Um, um, the strong neurotic character woman or something like that. But also, restoration, restoration thing, very mannered, because I was a good mover, you know. <laughs> and I said, well, why can't I have a, a, you know, sort of more emotional, oh, well, you can't, you can't do that kind of thing, you know. And uh, also, you just don't look right. Well, I would, you know, I would go to auditions once I left the school. And they take one look at me and say, oh, come back when we're doing white cargo, dear. White cargo? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, 
a play that was done in rep a lot about a, you know, an English chap who went off to the boondocks in, in um, Africa, Asia, or wherever, and he had a live-in local girl, you know. So, and... Uh, wow. <laughs> and also, wow. also then, um, the, the first sort of uh, television and film that I did over there, I was a, an ingenue, but I was a black ingenue. Right. And so I spent hours getting all this stuff on me. And there was a very... I mean, you blacked up. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it is from another era. Well, both yeah. of your treatment as a woman, right? You didn't look like an English rose. Yeah. And the second one, white yeah. when white people blacked up. Yes. It is nothing wrong or right, but it's just extraordinary that that was still happening. And there were some charming young African chaps on the, in the um, piece. And I w remember I had a blue dress that I was wearing that was cut quite low. And um, I was leaning forward, talking to them. And obviously, there was some cleavage showing that hadn't got the slap on it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and this dear young chap said, oh, I was going to ask you to come out with me. But of course, now I can't. It was just devastating. You know? Times have changed. Yeah.